Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening, everyone. Our very welcome this our annual Mass in Anno St. Alva Plunkett. This year marks a very special year of Alva Plunkett, as last Tuesday we celebrated the 350th anniversary of his Sea to Armagh. And that's why we had the unveiling of, this, unveiling of the statue in Armagh last Tuesday, and also the new pilgrim walk, which began last Sunday in Drada and finished in Armagh on Tuesday. So it is an important year for the life of the diocese. And our Mass this evening, slightly different at the beginning, in that I'll bless the water at the beginning instead of the penitential rite, and then instead of the normal creed, we'll renew our baptismal promises and then you'll be sprinkled with the water. So when we do that during Mass, we don't have a penitential rite as this <coughs> takes its place. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who will that through water, the fount of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek your protection this day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. God our Father, you will, Saint Oliver, with your spirit of fortitude, enabling him to feed your flock by his word, and lay down his life for his sheep. Help us by his prayers to keep the faith he taught and follow the way of reconciliation which he showed by his example. Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a lawyer who to disconcert Jesus stood up and said to him, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. You answered right, said Jesus. Do this, and life is yours. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of brigands. They took all he had, beat him, and then made off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be travelling down the same road, 
But when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite who came to the place saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveller who came upon him was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He then lifted him onto his own mount, carried him to the inn and looked after him. Next day he took out two denarii and handed them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and on my way back, I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell into the brigand's hands? The one who took pity on him, he replied. Jesus said to him, go and do the same yourself. The Gospel of the Lord. I believe that St. Oliver is a saint for our times. Eli Wiesel, the 1986 Nobel Prize winner for peace, a survivor of Auschwitz, a champion of human rights, wrote, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. In the parable of the Good Samaritan in today's Gospel, Jesus explains his two great commandments, which he made inseparable, so that they became one commandment. To love God above all things and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God. Jesus tells us to love one another as he has loved us. A love that is never indifferent to those in need, even to a stranger. Jesus is telling us that our acts of love must be inclusive, without judgment or limits. It is a love that is compassionate, does not stand on ceremony, it reaches out. It is a love that is courageous, where we step outside our comfort zone. St. Oliver's life is a perfect example of this love. His ministry in Ireland expressed this compassionate, inclusive love. He cared for his flock, especially those, the poor, suffering famine and deprivation, the children who were uneducated, and the people who were without sacraments, to whom he ministered in the woods and mountains, heedless of wind and rain. So St. Oliver put people first. He was the Good Shepherd. Like the Good Samaritan, his love had no limitations. It was expressed in his desire to live at peace with his Protestant neighbors. In a letter written at that time, it read, he is so esteemed by the Protestants that even the Protestant nobility vie with each other in receiving him as their guest and enjoying his society. Whence it happens for his sake, they do not harm our clergy. His love was visible as a peacemaker between the opposing factions in the church. Also as a peacemaker, he never condoned violence. For men of violence, his word was the word of St. Peter. Never pay back one wrong with another. St. Oliver also stepped outside of his comfort zone. He chose to give up a comfortable life of a professor in Rome to become Archbishop of Armagh. He was not warmly received by everybody. A call to renewal is always challenging. Some clergy and laity were comfortable in a lackadaisical attitude to their faith. In four years, he confirmed nearly 50,000, many in their old age. He ordained priests under the canopy of the open sky in the woodlands, just as he did here in Ballybarrack. He set up schools, he held national and provincial synods, and brought life to dioceses that had not seen a bishop in 40 or even a 100 years. All this was achieved with poor roads and communications, 
He traveled in all weathers. St. Oliver carried out this ministry under the severe limitations of the repressive penal laws and the harsh prejudice which the Catholic community endured. And yet we venerate him as a saint for something even deeper and more lasting. Sainthood implies holiness, a nearness to God, which was reflected in his conformity with Christ. I'm reminded of the gospel two weeks ago, where Jesus said, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Many times, St. Oliver slept in hedgerows and ditches. St. Oliver was the good shepherd. He wrote, I will remain with my own, nor will I abandon them till I be dragged to the seashore. So he was. Like Christ, they tried to convict him with false witnesses here in Dundalk. But when that failed, they sent him to London for a sham trial. Like Christ, he died witnessing to the mercy and love of God. So do I pray for those who spill my blood, saying as St. Stephen did, O Lord, lay not this sin to them. Most of all, his nearness to God, his conformity with Christ, was evident in the grace that gave him no fear of death at the end. Peace and the presence of the Holy Spirit were with him. On his last night he slept soundly, was awakened off at Mass, and went to his death as unconcerned as if he had been going to a wedding. Indeed his dying words were, Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. We too, like St. Oliver, live in a world where the church is treated at times with both hostility and indifference. Indeed, there are many parts of the world where Catholics are being martyred even at this day. In this country, some of this is as a result of grievous sins committed by members of our church. Some is born out of an antipathy or indifference to any beliefs that do not concur with the views of an increasingly secular society. We may feel that the problems and challenges facing the church today may often seem impossible to deal with. We talk about the need for renewal. St. Oliver practiced it. St. Oliver, through his ministry, teaches us that firstly, we must renew our own faith, recognizing that we cannot impose our faith, but only witness to the love of God within us, made visible in the love of our neighbor. This is not to say that we should simply hide our faith within our, within our own hearts, or that faith should never be part of the public arena. No, we are called and cannot but share the hope that we experience when we open our lives to the love of God, when we encounter the risen Christ, present in the world and in each other. The path of renewal will be as it was for St. Oliver, at times challenging. Let us at these times turn to St. Oliver to find strength and healing, to experience through him God's love and closeness. To be a source of strength when we are afraid of what lies ahead or when we are concerned about the direction which our family members are taking in life. Most of all, let us never lose hope. Let us, like St. Oliver, trust in the Holy Spirit. St. Oliver showed us that our, in our lives we sow seeds of faith that we may never see grow. As Pope Paul VI said, the message of Oliver Plunkett offers a hope that is greater than the present life. It shows a love that is stronger than death. We can have courage and perseverance because St. Oliver prays for us eternally. Listen to the prayer of St. Oliver in his last hours, a prayer that he made, that was that he gave us 
in the hours before he was to go to his death. It expresses more eloquently than any words of mine his love of God and love of neighbor. I beseech my Savior to give all Catholic people of faith perseverance in prayer and good works and grant me the grace to be tomorrow where I may pray for them, not as a, a confused reflection in a mirror, but face to face, God's will be done. Finally, I pray that in remembering St. Oliver Plunkett, that we will hear in our own hearts the personal call to love, the call to a service to God that God has committed to us, which has not been committed to another. That St. Oliver will help us to deepen our personal relationship with the risen Christ through prayer and selfless acts of love. I hope that this shrine here in Bali Barak will continue to inspire all of us to accept our own daily crosses and sacrifices and to encourage us to be stronger in our faith, firmer in our hope, and that our lives are a witness to God's love for every human person, a love that is never indifferent. In that way, like St. Oliver, we too shall be transformed. From day to day, we will become the likeness of Christ. We will move closer to Christ and be transformed by his presence within us and his love for us. Lord. For as on the festival of St. Oliver, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. rightly created gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through christ our lord Amen. Through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. prayer and blessing. Just to thank our choir for our so beautiful celebration here this evening. To thank all who tidied the grounds and prepared this area for us. I'd also like to thank but also offer an apology to the man who made the benches for us this year, their new benches. I don't know if you're here. You introduced yourself to me last Thursday. I was rushing. I didn't catch your name. So if you're here, my apologies, but we thank you very much for making the new benches for us. And also for Deacon Philip, for some great words of encouragement this evening. So thank you very much, Deacon Philip. And to all of you for coming and participating in our Mass this evening. And let us pray. May the sacrament of unity we have shared, Lord, renew in us the power of your Spirit, so that after the example of St. Oliver, we may work for reconciliation and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the final blessing, I'll give it through the intercession and the relic of St. Oliver. And then at the end of Mass, feel free to come up and venerate the relic. In fact, we leave the relic in the front because this isn't too safe. So we leave that at the front and just come on up yourselves. 
But we now say the Diocesan prayer to Saint Oliver Plunkett. Oliver, saint and hero, you followed the way of Jesus and stood up for what you believed in. We honor your memory. Guide the church of our ma as we engage in the challenge of our time. Direct our energies in ways that nurture faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Walk with us on the pilgrim path, which involves renewal and change. Help us to trust in Jesus as leader and teacher. May we value all that is sacred and embrace courageously ways of peace and reconciliation. Amen. The Lord be with you. And through the intercession of St. Oliver Plunkett, may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Children's Day.